Hello everyone. In this lecture, we will do a quick recap of phasor representation of sinusoids and we'll see how the impedance of different passive elements in a circuit is represented as a phasor. Now we already know that any complex number W which is represented as A plus JB. J here represents iota. Now throughout school, we are used to seeing I to represent iota. But in electrical engineering, because I is often confused with current, you'll find that iota is now replaced with J to represent the imaginary component. Let this be the real axis. Let this be the imaginary axis. So I'm referring to a point W in this complex plane, which has a projection on the real axis at a distance of A from the origin and B from the origin along the imaginary axis. So if I wanted to represent this as a vector, this is how W would look like. Now of course W has some length m and it makes an angle theta with respect to the horizontal, with respect to the real axis. Now this length becomes m cos theta and this becomes m sin theta. As a result, I can write w also as m cos theta plus j m sin theta, where this is a and this is b. Now this type of representation is called the rectangular form. Another form of representation which we understand popularly using the Euler's theorem. By Euler's theorem, we know that cos theta plus j sin theta is equal to e to the power j theta. Now, by inspection, using Euler's theorem in this expression, we can say that w is m e to the power j theta. And this kind of representation is called the polar or exponential form of representation. says w is m e to the power j theta and the relationship between these parameters between the polar parameters and the rectangular parameters is that since m is the length of this vector it is a square plus b square and since theta is the angle you can say theta is tan inverse of b by a to convert complex numbers from rectangular form to polar form you can simply plug in a as m cos theta and b as m sin theta. Till now our vector is static in space. So it has a certain length, it has a certain direction, but it is a fixed radial line. If the vector now starts rotating at an angular velocity omega, which is in radians per second, your w is not a fixed radial line anymore. It is now a function of time which would become m e to the power which was just e to the power j theta will now have a component j omega t plus theta where omega is the angular frequency so for every small unit of time that passes this vector makes a sweep of angle which is omega t because omega is the angular velocity units is radians per second you multiply it with time so you get radians. So the sweep in angle in time t for a radial line which is rotating at an angular velocity of omega is omega t. Right? So w used to be just e, m e to the power j theta but if this vector is now rotating w is now a time dependent function which is m e to the power j instead of just theta it's omega t plus theta. Now at any given point, the projection along real axis, say the real part of Wt is m cos omega t plus theta and that on imaginary part is m sin omega t plus theta. These are the kind of waveforms we are familiar with when we talk of sinusoids. 
say a voltage which has a peak value m, an initial phase of theta and a frequency 2 pi by omega if I talk in terms of hertz. Now this is where the phasor representation of a sinusoidal function of time comes into picture. Let there be a voltage function which is a sinusoidal function of time which defines instantaneous voltage at any given time as Vm cos omega t plus theta. If capital V is the RMS value also called the effective value of this AC voltage which is defined as Vm by root 2. If I had to define it in terms of RMS value I can say that Vt is root 2 V where V is the RMS value cos omega t plus theta. If I compare this relationship with a complex function can I say that Vt is simply the real part of Vm e to the power j omega t plus theta because Vm e to the power j omega t plus theta can be written as Vm cos omega t plus theta plus j Vm sin omega t plus theta but what we have here is simply Vm cos omega t plus theta so I can say that if I had to represent this as a complex function I can say that Vt is actually just the real part of that complex function. If I further simplify this and write Vm as root 2 V e to the power j omega t plus theta and write it as V e to the power j theta into root 2 e to the power j omega t. We notice that this complex function is separated into two parts. The first part is a complex constant and the second part is a function of time. It includes a conversion factor which relates a maximum value to the RMS value that's this root 2. Right? So it is this first part which we define as the phasor V. Now phasors are often represented in bold phase font. Okay, so this phasor V which is V e to the power j theta where V is the RMS value of the sinusoid is called a transform of the voltage Vt. Okay, so it is obtained by transforming a function of time into a complex constant that retains the essential information that is the effective value, the RMS value and the phase angle. The term e to the power j omega t indicates rotation at an angular velocity omega but this would remain the same for all voltages and currents which are associated with a given source and therefore this term may be put to one side until we need it again. So if I have to represent a sinusoid or various sinusoids in a given circuit as long as frequency remains the same all I need to represent such signals is the phasor. Remember that the length of this phasor is the RMS value Okay, so how can we write a phasor? Say I want to represent a voltage Vt which is 10 cos omega t plus pi by 6. I want to represent Vt as a phasor. Vt is right now a sinusoid. I want to find the phasor representation of this Vt. That means I'm looking for this capital bold faced V to represent it as V e to the power j theta. So I can represent this Vt as the real part of 10 e to the power j omega t plus pi by 6. I need to break this into this form. And then this part would be called the phasor. So of course the amplitude I've brought an extra root 2 here that means I'll have to divide this by root 2 and e to the power j pi by 6 remains here. Okay. So the phasor representation and 10 by root 2 is 7.07 .07. so this becomes 7.07 .07 e to the power j pi by 6. I represent this as a phasor bold faced V that has an angle 
pi by 6 and a length 7.07. Now this is the phasor representation of the sinusoidal voltage Vt which is rotating at an angular frequency omega. Omega is not specified. The value of omega is not specified while writing a phasor. Now how is this relevant for electrical engineering? That is what brings us to the discussion of element impedance. Okay. Now impedance is defined as the ratio exponential voltage to exponential current and is a measure of opposition to flow of current offered by a passive element. such as a resistor, an inductor, or a capacitor. Okay. This is what is impedance. Now, we already understand resistance, but to understand impedance, let us see how current and voltage behave through a resistor, inductor, and capacitor. So, before that, let me just restate our convention. Say this is the current IT. Its maximum value is IM and minus IM. So I can write that IT is IM cos omega T, where omega is its angular frequency. And in terms of its RMS value, if I is IM by root 2, right? RMS value or effective value. I can simply say that it is root 2 i cos omega t and if I wanted to represent this as a phasor I would say that this would be my phasor capital I which is bold phased that would be i angle 0 right so this is my phasor i it has a length i and has an angle 0. When such a current i flows through a resistance r, we know that the voltage r into i, which we can write it as 2 r i cos omega t. So if I had to represent this voltage across the resistor as a phasor, I could say this is, if I wrote this as vr, this vr itself can be represented as a phasor. In this case, the opposition to flow of current would be Vr angle 0 and I angle 0, which would mean Ri angle 0 upon I angle 0, which gives R angle 0. So that would give R. This is the impedance offered by a resistor. And what this simply means is that it's the resistance but the phase with respect to the current is zero. There is no phase difference. This resistance is in phase with the current. Now, suppose I look at an inductor that has an inductance L. Okay. So the voltage VL in this case is defined as L di by dt, where I is root to i cos omega t which would mean root to omega l i into minus sine omega t i can write this as root to omega l into i cos of omega t plus 90 degrees now, if I represent this term as VL, I can rewrite this in the phasor representation as VL angle 90, right? Where VL is omega Li. In this case, the opposition to flow of current would be VL angle 90. The voltage upon current, current is I angle 0. It's omega Li angle 90 
on i angle 0 which means omega l angle 90 or j omega l in the rectangular form and omega l angle 90 in the phasor form. Similarly, if I talk of the capacitance, say when a voltage root 2 V cos omega t appears across a capacitance C. In that case, the current through this capacitor is C dV by dt. If, if this is V, then this expression becomes root 2 omega C into V into minus sin omega t, which I can again write as root 2 omega C V cos omega t plus 90. If I want to represent this in terms of a phasor, I can say this is, and if I say that this term should be represented as, if I represent this as IC, I can say that this current has a phasor representation of IC angle 90 degrees. In this case, the opposition to flow of current which is the ratio of exponential voltage to exponential current would be V angle 0 to current angle 90 degrees. Now remember that V is the RMS value of that voltage. So omega CV angle 90 degrees because IC is omega CV. This gives us 1 upon omega c angle minus 90 degrees. Remember that when you are dividing two phases, magnitudes can be divided directly and angles would mean angle of numerator minus angle of denominator. Okay. So it becomes 0 minus 90, ni minus 90 degrees or in other words, I can say minus j 1 upon omega c in terms of rectangular form or 1 upon j omega c because minus j is 1 by j. So if we summarize this and write, we can say, so impedance of passive elements to sinusoidal currents, right? Sinusoidal means something which has a frequency, which is a function of omega. That impedance is also a function of omega. So for a resistance, and that impedance is represented by the capital letter Z, let me call it as capital letter Z. So for so Z for resistor as a function of J omega is capital Z R is simply R or R angle zero. It only has a real component. For an inductance, this impedance as a function of omega is found to be J omega L or omega L angle 90 in polar form. So it is purely imaginary and for capacitance this impedance as a function of frequency capital ZC was found to be 1 upon J omega C or 1 upon omega C angle minus 90 degrees. So the quantity R is called AC resistance which we already know it's measured in ohms. The corresponding term for inductance, the impedance offered by an inductance is called inductive reactance. This term is often called XL, inductive reactance. And for the capacitance, this impedance, one upon omega C is called XC, which is capacitive reactance. Okay. It's also measured in ohms. All these are measured in ohms. So this is what we study in high school when we would say this is R, is real xl which is omega l is in this direction and 1 upon omega c is towards the negative imaginary axis thank you